CTV News at 6 with Joe Perkins. Good evening. Thank you for being here. An emergency cabinet session had ministers and the premier meeting today to discuss a crisis within Christy Clark's government. The premier was forced to apologize last week following a leaked internal document laying out plans for government employees to court ethnic communities to gain votes for the Liberal Party. Premier Clark launched an internal investigation with the result expected this week, but dissension within Liberal ranks is growing. A top aide to Clark resigned on Friday in the wake of the scandal. More resignations could follow and some are wondering if the Premier herself could step down. Our legislature reporter Stephen Andrew has more. The crisis within the provincial government has ministers hastily making their way to Vancouver for an emergency cabinet meeting. I don't know what's on the agenda, uh, but uh, and I'm not able to share that with you. But I think it's safe to say, as with all cabinet meetings, you know, there's always updates. For Chong and other ministers, that's an update on the scandal that has already claimed a top advisor in the Premier's office. Premier Clark's Deputy Chief of Staff, Kim Hackstad, resigned Friday after leaked documents revealed she was connected to a plan to use taxpayer dollars to gain ethnic votes. The documents suggest the Liberals look for political wins, capitalizing on historical wrongs, such as the Komagata Maru incident and the Chinese head tax. Mr. Speaker, the Premier has apologized my caucus, and I also apologize for this particular instance. The government has launched an investigation and apologized, but it isn't enough for some members of the Liberal Party. I request her that she resigns. Uh, let somebody else come up with the uh, new leadership up to the elections. Otherwise, we will lose British Columbia. With the Liberals 16 points behind, those that watch public opinion closely believe that attitude could spell even more trouble for the party. Unless there's a very poignant way to deal with this and to convince them that this was a mistake uh, and you offer a very uh, long apology for it, it's going to be tough for those voters to come back. It's something the Liberals know all too well, and why the Premier gathered her cabinet to speak to them in person for the first time since the ethnic scandal broke. The senior cabinet minister for Vancouver Island says what she learns in the meeting may determine how the party should move forward. Should she stay after this scandal? Again, I think it's fair that we... I. I hear the results of the investigation. You may hear something in that cabinet meeting that may change your mind. Uh, that I don't know. But the decision on the Premier's future doesn't rest solely with cabinet. Party insiders say she plans to stay and fight. And to push Christy Clark out, it would take support from the caucus and party executive, a move that is highly unlikely. The Premier returns to the legislature tomorrow, where she will meet with caucus and then face reporters. Stephen Andrew, CTV News, Victoria. Other news now. The B.C. Court of Appeal will begin hearing arguments tomorrow into the case of Gloria Taylor, who died while fighting to have doctor-assisted suicide decriminalized. I speak on behalf of my entire family when I say we are so, so proud of her, and we are continuing the struggle for compassion and the choice in Gloria's name. In a news conference today, Taylor's mother and sister spoke out as a precursor to tomorrow, expressing disappointment with the federal government. In June of last year, a B.C. Supreme Court judge struck down the laws that make physician-assisted dying illegal in Canada. The federal government appealed the decision. The case is launched by three plaintiffs, including Taylor, who suffered from ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. The B.C. Uh, Civil Liberties Association is representing all three plaintiffs. Uh, we're disappointed that the federal government didn't immediately begin the business of drafting legislation that would respect choice at the end of life. Uh, there was certainly the opportunity to do, there, do so there uh, with the very strong guidance offered by Madam Justice Smith's meticulous judgment. Legal arguments are scheduled to run until Friday. Whatever the outcome, the case is expected to continue on to the Supreme Court of Canada. Back on the island, anchors are up and nets are in the water as hundreds of fishing boats rush to the waters off Vancouver Island in search of herring. Last night, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans opened the lucrative but short herring fishery. Now fishermen are clamoring to get to the Strait of Georgia as quickly as possible to reel in a catch they hope will erase bad memories of last year's bounty. CTV Scott Cunningham has more. 
Lashed to the dock, the Mid Island's fishing fleet seems to be floating on anticipation alone. Everybody's excited. I mean, it's herring time. Late Saturday afternoon, the promise of a new fishing season was realized. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans gave the green light to herring gill netters. In Nanaimo's harbor, a fleet using a different type of net are still waiting for their go ahead. Really excited. I love it. I've been off uh, work for like four months going to school. So uh, it'll be good to get back out on the ocean. Getting back to fishing may be about more than reels, hooks, and nets. This year, it may be about redemption. Herring is a fishery that's uh, suffered a bit in the last few years, but there is potential. Dockside hopes are high for a strong herring rebound. We hear that maybe prices might be a little higher, but that's only a might be, a maybe. As the fleet dreams of their catch, a group in Nanaimo is hoping massive fishing vessels will still have a place in the harbor in seasons to come. The Save the Harbor Coalition are denouncing a harbor redevelopment plan, which they say will not cater to the commercial fleet. This is an economic driver. It's about to dry up if we make a bad decision today. Today, the focus on these docks is only on herring and how much each boat will capture in a season which can be as short as one week. Scott Cunningham, CTV News, Nanaimo. To some island health news now, a uh, Victoria man has joined the fight to reverse a trend that many believe has reached epidemic proportions. A new report spearheaded by a brand known for activity, Nike, says physical inactivity is spiking at an alarming rate. And the search is on for answers, and it has some help tonight from a Vancouver Island man. Cleaning up the gym may be the easiest job on Ken Marchtoller's to-do list. Based on the current statistics, uh, the, you know, the, the current generation of children are going to live five years less than their parents. It's a reality at the heart of a video. You said five, right? Five years. That asks children... Why are you asking me that? ...what they would do if they could live an extra five years. The video is part of a report spearheaded by Nike called Designed to Move. Its uh, sole purpose is to reverse the trends that we're seeing in health, uh, obesity, you know, heart disease, sugar diabetes. For years, March Toller has operated a program called Little Warriors that teaches young children martial arts. It's likely one of the reasons why he was recently hand-selected to take part in a discussion. He was flown to Nike headquarters, along with several other fitness leaders, to brainstorm on how to make the world, and particularly children, more active. Basically, you know, the, the inactivity right now is at its worst level in history. For three days, March Toller helped analyze the data in the Design to Move report. It's information at the heart of an initiative designed to get people moving. So far, the initiative has teamed up with 70 organizations that are already leading the fight to stay active. The new initiative will help create funding and support to keep programs running, especially in schools. Nike recently donated $50 million to the First Lady's campaign, which for years, March Toller says, struggled to raise money. If it is money for programs that's needed, the initiative should help. It might even pay off on Vancouver Island. March Toller says Nike is looking at the idea of supporting his Little Warriors program. Whatever happens, he says making the world more active will take time. For now, the fight is slowly beginning to move, thanks to people like March Toller, who are more than happy to carry the weight. Good Life Fitness is also doing its part fighting childhood obesity. Across the country, people were donating to spin to shed a couple of pounds and help children do the same. For eight full hours, Good Life gyms across the country looked like this. Thousands of people took part, raising money for programs that will ch uh, help children stay active. This is the second year Good Life employees and gym members have been hopping on bikes for a full day of spinning that participants hope sends a message. It's pretty much quality of life, so we really want people to stay fit and active, especially starting at a younger age, because that's when we develop habits. So making sure that you're, you're exercising and you're working out, and most of uh, North America population isn't getting the recommended hour of physical activity a day. So that's what we're working on. The campaign aims to raise half a million dollars. Donations can still be made by logging on to Good Life's website. 
The countdown is on in three months. Baseball will be back in Victoria and baseball fans will get their first chance to see the city's newest sports team. And some of those fans now know where they will be sitting when they do. This morning's seats at Royal Athletic Park were ready for picking. Season ticket holders had first chance or their first chance rather at selecting where to sit. Home plate at the park has been moved in 15 feet. So staff say some of the sight lines have been changed. The Harbor Cats would not say how many season tickets have been sold, but say they're pleased with sales so far. I think that everybody's ready for baseball to be back and be here as a long-term uh, thing as part of the baseball uh, and sports community here in Victoria. So I think the fans are excited. Everybody is eager to see it back here. I think this is the right brand of baseball and the right level of team and the right business model for this community. So the fan support, I think everybody is uh, eager and excited to support it. So response has been great. Harbor Cats open the season at home on June the 5th. The team will be part of the West Coast League, a college level wood batted league with 11 teams all from the Pacific Northwest. Details on purchasing tickets and merchandise can be found online at harborcats.com. Before we get to weather, a uh, reminder, time is running out to count all your flowers. Last Tuesday, the 37th annual flower count kicked off as a way to promote Greater Victoria as an attractive shoulder season holiday destination. Last year, more than 2 billion blooms were tallied despite the chilly temperatures. This year, with the weather turning, organizers are optimistic numbers will be higher. We've got some work to go, though. As of this afternoon, the flower count was more than 124 million blooms. The deadline to add to the count is tomorrow at 4 o'clock. You can submit your count at flowercount.ca. Finally tonight, uh, a happy birthday to a man Vancouver Island, and particularly the Comox Valley, knows very well. Last night, members of the CTV family came together to celebrate a very special birthday for a very special CTV videographer. There's the cake, and there is the man. Gord Kerbis doesn't exactly look too thrilled to have the cameras rolling. Uh, Kerbis celebrated his 50th birthday celebration yesterday with friends and family. Kerbis grew up in the Comox Valley and knew the community and people well when he joined the now CTV family. That was back in 2006. He says there is no place else he'd rather tell stories than from the heart of the island, smack in the middle in the Comox Valley. Last night, Mr. Kerbis reflected on his last 50 years. I think you, you go through your life and you want to make a difference in, in people's lives and, and not you don't, you affect them and you, t you touch them in different ways. And I think it's rewarding to see an evening like this that, that your friends and your families and, 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 and loved ones come together just to show you their, their love and support for you that shows that yeah, you, have a made, you have made a difference in people's lives. On the mantle in the Kerbis house, something Andrew Johnson had to share. He tweeted this photo last night of Mr. Kerbis back in 1986. From the weekend crew, a very happy birthday to Gord Kerbis, wishing you many more to come.